so much for being on today, Kelly, and take it away. Thanks, Jessica, appreciate it. Thank you everybody who registered for the presentation today. We're super excited to have uh, Carol Inman and Ken Handelman present um, in lieu of Dr. Cyrus, uh, some situations beyond his control arose and they were able to jump in and take his place with the presentation. So thank you for that. Um, Carol is a key account manager for Henry Shine First Fit, as is Ken. And we appreciate their support with this, um, this procedure and product line and uh, look forward to educating you more about it. Thanks so much, Carol. Thank you. And let me start, I'm gonna take myself off and start sharing my screen here. And Kelly, can you guys see this okay? Yes. Perfect, so great. So before we begin, First Fit is so very excited to be here. We are truly honored to partner with DSG and so grateful to be here with you today. DSG is truly an industry leader to bring new technologies to you. And you know, we know it's a strange time for the dental profession, but we're so excited to see that you're taking the time available to learn. We'll come back from this stronger than ever. Kelly, Jessica, the DSG team have all worked hard to put this together. So thank you so much to DSG for inviting us and to all of you for taking the time to join. Unfortunately, as Kelly mentioned, you know, due to circumstances beyond our control, Dr. Cyrus Tomasabi could not be here today. I'm honored to share information about the system. And I think you know, I'm gonna make sure you all have met Ken Halderman, the director of First Fit, who's on with us and ready to help in any way. So my name, is Ken. Hey, Ken. so my name is Carol Inman. I work full-time for First Fit. I've been around dental, you know, for most of my life. My dad owned a dental laboratory in California growing up. As many of the wonderful dental laboratories, you know, dental technicians that you work with at DSG, I'm sure of experience. I remember the dentists that were both customers and friends to my family hanging out. And one of the jokes would inevitably be, who's the best dentist? As Dr. Cyrus likes to say, if you want the truth about this, ask your lab. In the end, the answer probably depends on what day you ask. As dentists, you have so many things going on you can't control, including a handpiece that's going at over 100,000 RPM, a patient that's moving around in the chair. And then, you know, once you have them in still, their tongue is all over the place. So many things you can't control, but with the first fit guided delivery system, we now have a solution. First, it's a truly revolutionary technology that allows you to control the environment, to place bridges, veneers with consistent accuracy and no temporaries by the use of 3D printed guides. I'm just trying to see if... I apologize, a little housekeeping here. I just wanna make sure you guys could see my screen okay. What is this evolution for our veneers and bridges? It's digital technology. It's using step-by-step -step printed preparation guides. You'll get ideal preps and a great fit. Your chair site time is greatly reduced. You know, there's less chair site time, especially as you come back to your practices, which means you'll be with more patients. There's no need for temporaries. And it's not just patient convenience, but yours as well. Even when you think you have a good temp, how often do you hear, I don't like it, my temporary's loose, my temporary broke, all these concerns just go away. 
And Jessica, I'm sorry, or Kelly, can you guys see my screen okay? Because on my side, it's coming in a little funky, so I wasn't sure. Yeah, <clears throat> Carol, it's coming up with the um, slideshow on the left-hand column as well. So if you go to the very bottom of your PowerPoint presentation, do an image by, um, yes, uh, one to the right, keep it to the right. One there more. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. Let me just back it up. I apologize, everyone here. You know, while Kyle's trying to get the screen on, let me talk a little bit about the technology and where it's That's perfect, from. Carol. Thank you. You good, go Carol? Right ahead, yes, go right ahead. I'm sorry. Well, Carol's trying to get the screen on. Let me talk just a few moments about, about where it came from. Henry Schein, uh, myself and Reed Aquafreda, I was at Densply at the time. Uh, Reed Aquafreda was, was at Henry Schein. We saw this, this uh, technology about 11 years ago. Uh, so this has really been in development for a long period of time. And just recently, both at Henry Schein, did we see the technology get to a point that we believed it was commercial, it was predictable, and it was good in, in practice protocol. Um, coming back after the coronavirus and the shutdowns, all of you, I believe, you know, believe that most of us believe that that there will be a pent up demand for dentistry. Uh, and when you look at that, uh, we also believe that there's going to be a different standard when it comes to protocol for setting up a, a, an operatory, and 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 the cleaning and the sterilization of the operatory, it, we believe will be a longer process than it once was. Uh, what, that's one of the major advantages of first fit. It is a single visit prep and placement. So you are minimizing the number of, of, of visits and therefore the number of, 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 of uh, uh, sterilizations of, of operatories. Carol, do you want to jump back in then? On sure, absolutely. Slide? Yep, Daniel, thank you. So like we said, you know, ideal preparation, what is the first fit? you'll get ideal preps and visit and no need for temporary convenience. You know, the, the patient convenience is huge. So single visit restorations, it's a system for single visit solution for veneers, bridges, using digital technology. It's a truly complete system. There's a workflow that allows us to plan the restorations accurately from the computer. You know, we translate those preps through the use of the 3D printed guides. We do very minimally invasive accurate bridges. In the case of veneers, we have a very unique tray delivery system so you can prep and seed in one visit. Like Ken was saying, you know, first fit technology has started over 10 years ago. It started over 10 years ago at Denmat with Dr. Cyrus. He continued developing it from there and then Henry Schein purchased it or acquired the distribution rights to it a couple years ago. The objective of this project was to use 3D printed guides to accurately and in a minimally invasive procedure prepare teeth. So try to think of it as reverse engineering. By preparing teeth with the guides and knowing the final prep, then the restoration will be delivered at the time of preparation. So traditional versus first fit. Again, you know, huge time savings as you can see with the no temporaries. While you might be fairly quick in your typical prep time, you will see as we continue to go through this, what we see with the computer versus what the most experienced dental eye can see and how we're always striving to create a prep that is as minimally invasive as possible. Having said that, if you choose a more aggressive type of super gingival prep, that is always your option. You know, in a conversation yesterday, Ken was just speaking about how, you know, as we go back to the offices, the elimination of temporaries in the first fit system is more relevant than ever before. You know, how do you confidence your patients to come back in and how are you going to manage chair side time? Besides eliminating a full appointment with the temporaries and the time to disinfect the room, which is probably going to be more involved than ever before, you're now prepping and seeding a three unit bridge in an appointment that is typically under 30 minutes. 10 unit veneer cases, again, you know, without temporaries are being prepped and seeded in about an hour and a half, including cleanup. So how does that work? Patient comes in, you take a full upper and lower impression. This can be a digital scan or a traditional PVS impression. If it's a digital scan, just let us know the appointment time. We can have a technician logged in via team viewer just to assure that all the needed data was captured and no chance that patient will ever need to come back. 
Impressions are the key for us. And we want to see all the raw data that's being cleared, cleaned up. You know, if it's a veneer case, there are just some photos you're going to also need so we can understand midline, et cetera. But again, there's no prep, no temporaries. Another huge advantage is that you can go ahead and bill this at the time of the impression. So you're really improving your cash flow. About 48 hours after submitting the case, you're going to receive a mock-up design proposal detailing exactly what we're looking at doing. Once you, once you approve it, we're going to proceed to fabricate. When the patient comes back, you're going to have a kit from DSG that includes the final restoration, any 3D printed guides you need to prep it, any burrs you need are all included. The burrs are not one-time use burrs or anything, and most practices are autoclaving them and using them in other areas of the practice. These are just the burrs you know that we use in prepping, and we want to make sure you use the same burrs to ensure the utmost success. You're also going to have a prep and an unprep model. We just ask that for the first couple of cases, you prep that unprep model to ensure you're fully comfortable with the process. You'll always have a full team to reach out to, including you know the great technicians at DSG, myself, Fran, who's my amazing counterpart, Dr. Cyrus, Steve, and the full team can, you know, by the time you get to the third case, most dentists are going straight to the patient. However, we, we ask that you always take time once a case is received, look at that prep model and place that restoration we send you on the model. If you have any concerns at that point, you still haven't gone to that patient. So think about this, you know, what does temporization cost? How much time does this take your staff to do, do go through that whole temporization appointment? How does your practice deal with temps after the appointment? And Dr. Stephen Miller of the middle of the Miller Center for Comprehensive Dentistry in Pennsylvania, he's a, an amazing person and part of the DSG and First Fit families. He did a great presentation a couple of weeks ago to the Pennsylvania Academy of General Dentistry. And what struck me is he spoke about a patient who came back with a temporary, it was at least two years ago that he had placed it, and he came back telling him that his crown had failed. You know, I know it sounds crazy, but it happens. You know, I know in the lab world, we deal daily with not making temporaries too nice, especially given new materials, as patients tend not to come back for those final needed restorations. I constantly hear nightmare stories with temps as they fall out at the most inopportune times, you know, 8 p.m. on a Saturday when you finally have some time with your family and so forth. They're also typically a pain to make. With the Shine acquisition, we are more focused on consumer education campaigns as we get consumers asking for first fit. You know, one of the questions we ask them when they call is why now? The majority of the answer, you know, besides the time savings is the fact that there are no temporaries. Putting aside the benefits to your office with eliminating the temporaries, this is just an experience your patients don't want to go through, and eliminating that adds to an incredible patient experience. So why first bet? You know, conserve more natural tooth structure. You know, I hear a lot that that looks like a hand sanitizer on that first icon. It's not, but <laughs> you eliminate temporary appointment from the from the treatment plan, improve patient convenience and minimize chair time, approve digital prep and final restoration. You know, our bridges are made of the beautiful Zerolux 1200 MPA zirconia. The veneers are made of pressed Emacs. You know, keep in mind, we're not changing your final restoration, just how you get there. Again, you know, you're going to build at the time of diagnosis and improve that cash flow, fewer remakes. So the benefits with the first fit system, again, no more temp appointment, no need for temp material, no setup or cleaning of the room, no proper emplacement of the temp, no loss of a patient because they like their temporary more, improved cash flow, and easier on the dentist back, neck, hand. You know, that's a huge one. I hear so much about back issues and the savings that that affords the dentists and the teams. So this part of it's pretty invaluable as well. You know, no, no cord packing. The patient, like we said, there's no change in their expectations, a much more reduced need for anesthesia, better and quicker patient experience with that guided preparation, less chair side, you know, means less time to keep still, 
You know, as nice as I'm sure you all are, don't let them kid you. Your patients typically don't want to be in your chair a minute more than they have to. The system is something you can offer them that's a differentiator. And, you know, the doctor down in the street really just won't have it today. So Dr. Gordon Christensen, I'm sure you all know, he is one of our many industry leaders, including Dr. Christian Coachman from Brazil, Dr. Diego de Castro in Spain, and they're all talking about the days of freehand and general dentistry coming to an end. They're talking, you know, about a dentist no longer picking up a handpiece without knowing the exact final outcome. You see several of the issues that come up with freehand in dentistry, and this can be eliminated by the planned designs we do with our proprietary software. You know, they're talking about this leading to an even better generation of dentists with more consistently precise results. So you're gonna, you know, you're gonna learn to love those 3D printed guides. You know, if you have a patient that's a gagger or that has issues with objects in the mouth that tends to bite down in your hand pieces, you know, you're gonna learn to love those guides. A great example is a dentist I work with that submitted a case I called him and had a lot of issues, didn't seem to be the right case for us. And his response was, oh no, Carol, I just want those 3D printed guides. You have no idea what I'm dealing with. And it just so shows, you know, once you get used to working with the guides and the controlled environment that they provide, you really don't want to go back. So how do you prep? Well, you're going to have, very easy, you have a first fit handpiece you're going to receive as part of a starter kit at certification. As you can see, you know, it's a layers air driven handpiece. The only difference is that extra disc that's built in that allows you to easily slide into the guide. Then it's just a general back and forth motion. A three unit bridge is just one guide and it'll take you about 90 seconds of actual prep time. You'll feel the prep open up as you go back and forth with the handpiece in the guide. We're going to ask you to rotate the handpiece as you get to the ends just to ensure that those cuts are fully in place, but you can't over prep. You know, you're going to see a lot of tips that'll help make sure everything's going great, you know, you want to make sure that guide's fully all the way down, soaking the guides in warm water, a little liquid glycerin on the disc of the handpiece, just make everything easier. You know, you can always run through a guide a second time, but the biggest thing to keep in mind is that you just can't over prep. Yeah, I think, I think one of the values of these prep guides is that we're hearing from the users, uh, and today we have about 700 certified doctors in the United States we're hearing from the users that really the learning curve of this technology is in, in many cases the training, but in, in many, in 90% in of the cases or more, it really is first case. Once you get beyond the first case, you're beyond the learning curve and really have a, a, really got beyond any of the obstacles or the, the hiccups that could happen in, in a procedure. Absolutely, absolutely. And they, once you start, like I said, once you start using it, I mean, you they definitely don't want to go back. As Ken was mentioning, you just really get to, once you learn to trust the guides, which is probably the biggest thing, you won't want to go back. Very precise preps. And again, you're maintaining healthy tooth structure. You know, uh, one question we get a lot is, you know, what if I go in and I find decay that I didn't know existed? You know, we know it's a Pandora's box when you're going in, you really don't know what you might find. Very easy. If that happens, typically you just build it back up with composite and move forward with your guides. So you're always gonna provide custom fitting, consistently aesthetic restorations. So are you moving forward or are you staying in the past? I remember shortly after coming on board at Shine, I had the privilege of attending one of our national sales meetings and listening to one of our amazing leaders there present. You know, he spoke about it in hockey, how it's not about where the puck has been, but about where it's going. Our businesses are no different and you're being here today with us and willing to look at a new way of doing things with an open mind is a great testimonial to this amazing group who's clearly looking out for their patients. So we finally made it, you know, digital dentistry is here. Keep in mind, you know, this is a system and we're not necessarily changing the final restoration, just how you get here. You know, our three unit bridges, like we said, are made out of a beautiful 1200 MPA zirconia. Our veneers are, Crest Emax. So very nice, consistent. If you're using intercoral scanners, of course, they provide also great, accurate results. Here we want to share with you where we are with First Fit today. You know, for the for the bridges, we're doing a three-unit bridge in the posterior. You know, as you can see, you know, we're going as far up as the canines for support. 
on those bridges, veneers, of course, we are doing in the anterior. First Fit Guided Prosthetics Delivery System. Bridge restoration, first appointment. Take the impression. Use an intraoral scanner or polyvinyl siloxane material to take an impression of the full arch, including both the upper and lower. Complete the prescription, take a bite registration and any pictures or x-rays that will be sent to your first fit authorized provider. Bridge restoration, second appointment. Once you receive the case from your dental laboratory, remove the provided first fit guides, final restoration, case specific burr, and the model. Soak the guides in a small bowl of warm water for 20 to 40 seconds. Insert the supplied burr in your first fit handpiece. Firmly fit the guide onto the model. Carefully glide the handpiece horizontally into the first fit guide. Proceed to make the preparation on the practice model. The preparation is complete. Remove the handpiece and gently rock and pull up on the guide to remove from the model. Clean the prepared area with water and compressed air. Using the final restoration, test the fit on the model. Once you have verified that the preparation is correct on the model, proceed to insert the cleaned guide into the patient's mouth. Proceed to make the preparation on the patient, ensuring the first fit guide is still firmly seated in the correct position. Once the preparation is complete, verify there are no remaining enamel tags that could hinder the restoration's placement. tip. Placing the guides back on the prep site a second time will help ensure the preparations are fully made. Proceed to remove any enamel tags manually and thoroughly clean the tooth to remove any particles. Once you have confirmed the restoration fits correctly, seat the restoration using the proper cementation or bonding protocols. First Fit Guided Prosthetics Delivery System. Learn more www.firstfit.com. So, once the digital scan is created, we can design the preparation to create parallel cuts for maximum retention in this minimally invasive three unit bridge. You know, as you can see, it's always a perfect parallel design that can't be accurately free handed. So part of the design proposal you're going to receive, it's always going to be taking into account the optimal depth and height of the cuts. The final design of the restoration can also be seen prior to fabrication. So this information is all emailed to the dentist for their final approval. So we are proud of this slide. One of the studies we performed for the FDA was to show the accuracy of the preparations using these guides to prepare teeth in the mouth then scan that prep and superimpose on the digital prep to see the accuracy. The accuracy was within 100 microns, well within any guidelines, and it just leads to the consistent and precise preps that we're discussing today. So nothing in dentistry is more invasive than cutting two healthy natural teeth down to support a three unit bridge. You know, if you have two healthy teeth, the first fit bridge looks like a Maryland bridge, but it's not. Maryland bridges failed. They were typically made out of 192 megapaxel Empress material. We know forces in the back of the mouth if you have a Bruxer patient can be much higher and they would break. You know, many dentists used to place Maryland bridges knowing that they would fail because ethically they just didn't feel right grinding down two healthy teeth. Now you have a solution with a beautiful 1200 MPA zirconia bridge we're producing. You know, with the introduction now of MDP containing adhesives, we understand long-term bonding to zirconia. And we've got 10 year plus case studies showing the success of these bridges. You know, these bridges are an amazing solution for those patients who don't want or don't qualify for an implant for any reason. You know, maybe they're a smoker, they're afraid of the screw in the mouth, they don't want to incur the expense of an implant. Now you no longer have to leave that empty space and you've got a great viable solution for them. This, when you talk a little bit about this bridge and its, the, its fact of it being so minimally invasive, 
I too ask about the Maryland Bridge oh, uh, in, in the inception. Uh, and there's really two things that make this acceptable where the Maryland Bridge was, was unacceptable. And that is that, that it, it, it's, it really is the digital technology combined with the materials. The digi digital technology allowing a perfect cut that's perfectly parallel down the center forces and, 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 and spreading the forces across the center cut of the two opposing give it strength there. And then that combination with the 1200 megapascal materials, those things together give you a restoration with no lateral force that could, could cause the same uh, uh, complications and end results of a Maryland bridge. So, thank you. No, thank you. And you know, that, that's a great point. You know, we have so many um, dentists that are, you know, they're, they're now running reports. They're pulling those patients with that empty spot in the mouth and bringing them back in because now they really have a great solution to use for those patients who just chose not to have an implant or didn't qualify for an implant. So the minimally invasive design, you can note, you know, the wings are designed with varying thicknesses, different heights. You'll have full design control and we'll see requests, you know, especially on the first one or two cases for those connectors to be a little thicker, a little wider. But usually by the time the dentist gets to the third case, they're back to the original design you know, as they've seen that those connectors are more than strong enough to withstand the forces. And this really leads to a long-term great solution. You know, again, I'm just showing these wings seem a little small, but they're more than strong enough to withstand those forces. But again, you still have options in the design. That's a picture of the 3D printed guide for the three unit bridge. Again, it's only one guide. You'll receive extras in the kit in case you wanna prep the model and so forth, but you only need one guide. They'll direct the handpiece to achieve the minimally invasive preparation that is highly redemptive. So there's a sample of the handpiece inserted into the bridge guide. Again, you know, a prep from the three printed guide and ensures the cuts are made in the best places to hold the restoration without unnecessarily destroying healthy tooth structure. You know, with today's zirconia, you know, we're just getting a beautiful, highly aesthetic restoration. So just some case examples. You can see the preparation using the guides, the restoration tried in ensuring, you know, there's no lateral, no produce, no uh, movement into interferences. The bridge delivered using our cementation protocol and the final x-ray. So that's a testimonial from Dr. Miller that I mentioned earlier, along with his patient, the amazing Kelly from DSG is on there, and Dr. Miller's great assistant, Derek. So, you know, not all the three unit bridge preparations have to be the minimal prep. You know, so we just wanna show a couple of examples. Here's an inlay linked to a minimal cut on the molar. You know, we can have an inlay on one side and a minimal cut on the other. Not all the bridge designs are limited to the minimally invasive design, so they can still vary in design. You know, here's an old crown was removed and we designed a minimally invasive cut on the molar. And Kelly, did you want to start do some of the polling questions right now? Thanks, Carol. Yeah, Jessica's gonna pull them up on the screen for us. So our first uh, poll is, do you currently provide veneers as a treatment option in your practice? And that would be a yes or a no. And the answers to uh, these questions help us develop additional programs for the future. So your participation is greatly appreciated. The second question is, how many candidates for veneers do you typically see in your practice each month? And that's zero, one, two, three patients, or perhaps more than three. Thank you. Perfect. Nice, so 85% um, of the respondents 
um, do offer veneers as a treatment option. And typically it's at uh, one a month is 42% of the respondents. Great, thank you everyone. So the veneers, you know, truly amazing part of the system that we offer are the veneers. You know, the 3D printed guides, as you can see, they come in different shapes. Some of them will come with multiple points of entry. So you're prepping several teeth with one guide. You know, some will only prep one tooth. You know, some will have one entry point that covers multiple teeth. So it just depends on what we want to accomplish with the case. These guides, you know, they're going to come with clearly labeled numbers to show you what number order to go in and a letter so you know which bird to use. We will work with your team on setting these up, but very easy to lay them out in number order. You know, a 10 unit case might have 10 guides, it might have 16 guides and so forth. It just depends on what we're doing. We want you to always use the number order we send the guides in as well as the burrs we send you. You know, typically a 10 unit veneer case might have two burrs and maybe halfway in between you'll have to have one, you'll have one burr change. Besides the use of the 3D printed guides, you're also using a very unique delivery tray. You've all seen veneer seatings, you know, by the time you get to the posteriors, anteriors have been distorted. All that is eliminated with the system. So this is our favorite slide. You know, it shows exactly what the software is all about. You know, we know exactly where and how much reshaping is needed. There's no way that even the most experienced eye can be this exact in seeing the preparations. So in this case, you know, the areas in pink are the areas that we're looking at reducing. There's another Preparation. After lubricating the guides with an oil-free lubricant, follow the numbers guides with the indicated color-coded burr to make preparations in the mouth. Polish the preparation with a red carbide burr and Soflex. Open the contact point with a 0.2 millimeter strip band. Use the first fit delivery tray to try in the veneers to check the angulation and margins. User tip, apply oil-free glycerin in the veneers to avoid friction during try-in. Conditioning, etch the teeth with etchant for 20 seconds and rinse thoroughly with water. Apply bonding agent and ensure teeth surfaces are shiny and gently air dry surfaces of the teeth. Light cure each tooth for 20 seconds. Clean the veneers with alcohol after the try-in. Etch the veneer with porcelain etch according to the percentage and timing to the manufacturer's instructions and rinse thoroughly with water. Clean the veneers with orthophosphoric etch, rinse thoroughly with water and dry. Add a coat of silane in each veneer and let it work for at least one minute. Optional tip, add one coat of bonding agent on the inside of the veneers, but do not cure the bonding layer on the veneer. Add a layer of resin cement on the inside of the veneers. Work upwards from incisal edge to the gingival edge and keep contact with the veneers being careful to avoid air bubbles. Cementation. Take your time to insert the tray into the patient's mouth in one smooth movement while applying a light continuous buckle pressure using the midline as a guide for centering the tray. Remove any excess cement at the gingiva with a micro brush being careful not to clean against the veneer. Tack cure on the center of the veneer with a light curing tip for three seconds. Apply a gentle pressure with the plastic end of a brush ensuring you maintain absolute cervical fit. Double check by gently tilting the tray that all of the veneers were successfully tack cured. Remove any excess liquid stage cement with a brush, always over the veneer and never go in the interface. Cure each tooth for 10 seconds through the delivery tray and add a tack cure through the palatal side. Apply glycerin gel on the margins and tack cure for 10 seconds. Using apical or lateral movements, clean the excess with a lapel or a curette. Remove the delivery tray, being careful not to twist or displace the veneers. Once the delivery tray has been removed, detach the delivery tray by first gently pulling the left side and pulling the right side down and continue detaching by grabbing the front side. In this procedure, it is important to have the bottom part of the delivery tray in your hands. 
No excessive force or contact should be used on the veneers. Cure each veneer individually a second time on both the lingual and buckle sides for 20 seconds with a curing light. Finishing. Open interdental spaces by removing cement with a sari saw and maintaining complete control over the instrument while being careful not to force. Use an interproximal fine diamond or carbide to refine the margins and polish the veneers to a high luster with a ceramic paste and brush. things you know you saw try in on the video most of our dentists today are not doing wax ups and try ins they're you know it goes back to trusting the guides and they're using those virtual mock up designs we send you that are very they're very accurate but you know it's always still an option for you you know also at the end of these videos both this one and one that's coming up with the amazing Dr. Ross Nash from the Nash Institute in North Carolina who's another great supporter you know you're going to still see Sarasa being used to break contacts Many of our dentists are also successfully choosing if they have a patient that's local, you know, just to have that patient come back a week later and clean up. You know, they let some of the contacts break naturally. Again, entirely up to you, but I just wanted to mention what we have many that are doing today. Just a quick case example. You can see the guide in place. Clean up there. Getting ready to place the tray. And then another quick video for you. And again, this is with Dr. Nash. Our before and afters there. There's another before and after. You know, our starter kit, like we said, includes the handpiece, the coupler, practice models and guides, and education material, waiting room materials, including posters. And here's a quick. Want to feel more yeah. confident by improving your smile, you but don't have the time to commit to multiple appointments or have hours to spend in a dental office? First Fit Veneers are the fast, safe, and highly aesthetic solution for you to look your best and have the smile of your dreams in as short as two hours. Transform your smile today and feel your best for life's biggest moments. Visit GetFirstFit.com and complete your smile assessment today. hope you enjoyed this program you know we'll review any questions that came in now but I just want to share both our contact as first fit as well as my email for anything you might want to review later if you're interested in certification please let us or your contacts at GSG know if you want to see any additional videos and information we've got some great information on our website at firstfit.com Kelly Ken and before we start with any questions is there anything you want to add Thanks, Carol. Ken, Ken, I think you're um, muted right now. Oh, I am. Yeah, go ahead, please. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, I see some of you have asked questions, and, and, I'm, and I'm attempting to answer them as we speak here. Uh, one of the questions that, that I think is most meaningful here is, is why not a single, re single restoration? We do have a single rest restoration uh, 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 offering here. Uh, but right now we're not offering it to the market. Oh, the, the single is a more complicated re restoration, believe it or not. It's, just, it's the simplest in, in, in a traditional method, but the most difficult in a method like this uh, because of the 360 design need. Uh, we do have an offering. It is tabletop in its design because of the super gingival application of all these restorations. And so we all know that, that it, with a single, 
a high percentage or 30, 40 percent, most people tell me, are, are replacements of existing crowns, with which, which all of them have been prepped in a, soup, a subgingival fashion. And therefore, it would eliminate the use of that for any of those replacements. We continue to work in R&D to, to offer a single, and we believe we'll get there, but we're just not there today, to the same level of, of efficiency, predictability, and, and, uh, and, and uh, uh, advantages that these other two restorations bring to the table. I apologize, I can't see. Do you guys have other questions there? Thanks, Ken. Uh, yes, that was in regards to the single unit. Another question was in regards to billing the insurance company. Um, you had made mention about billing it at the impression appointment versus the insertion appointment. And is there particular data or a reference for the dentist specific to that? Yes, no, absolutely. We do have a, a set of um, insurance codes that we would be happy to share with you. We do share it at the time of certification as well. And, you know, we've been told, you know, with the three unit bridge, they're actually ahead of the game as far as for the billing side of it. And as you know, what we've been told is that most of our doctors are billing at the time with that first visit when they're taking that impression, they are able to bill it out fully right then and there. So what they're billing out is basically the two connectors as well as the content. Got it. Uh, let's see, two other questions. One was, how did the case with a wing and a crown work? It's, it's ironic, I'll take that one, because that uh, we've done a number of those, but the first uh, time we did that, uh, I have a restoration of my own mouth that is in fact the, 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 uh, the crown in the wing. Um, and, and, you know, I have, I have another uh, bridge in my mouth on the other side. Uh, I found that the finish line on the bridge uh, is, is much less recognizable with my tongue. As we all know, we play with our teeth with our tongue, and especially when there's a finish line, it's much less recognizable. I don't have any shift. It sits right down on the gum. Um, you know, with, like with any bridge, you know, I use a water pick to, to, to uh, do hygiene. Uh, and, and, but when I'm on the road or something, I, I, I just use a flosser. Uh, but yeah, I'm having great success with it. Uh, ironically, we speak about open spots in the mouth. I didn't have a virgin. Uh, and it, answer, it kind of answers the next question, do the abutments yeah. need to be virgin? And the answer is no, okay? Even if you're doing a slot, if you have a stable filling in the non-virgin tooth in the doc, and, and you deem it, it's stable, you can prep right into not now not a not a not an amalgam, but on a composite filling. You can prep right into that 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 uh, uh, composite filling and place it. In my case, I had an amalgam, they, a big amalgam. They removed the amalgam. They did a composite, uh, and, and you know they, they filled it a little bit, and then they 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 set they prep that composite and put the crown over the the tooth that wasn't virgin. So the answer is, do they have to both be virgin? No. Okay, the only time that, that the only thing you have to watch in the bridges is if if the preparation or when you go to clean that, if you do remove it, if you start getting prepped then subgingival, then you have to go back to a traditional method. But what happens is, seeing you don't know that till the prep, if we do a, a, a bridge for you and you get subgingival and you have to then say to the lab, say to the DSG lab, hey, listen, I, I went subgingival, I'm going to go to a, 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 a you know, you, I'm, I re impressed it. I, uh, you can use our restoration as a temporary, and you'll be you'll be charged for you, you will only be charged once. You won't be charged for utilizing ours as a temporary in that case. Okay. Great. Thanks, Ken. Great answers. I don't see any other active answers. Jessica, did you have the last uh, two polling questions? Thanks. So our concluding uh, polling questions are one, what are your restorative options with a uh, single tooth replacement? So when you're replacing a single tooth in your practice, are you using a traditional three unit bridge, a Maryland bridge, a single tooth implant, or perhaps a partial? And lastly is, would fewer appointments allow you to treat more patients in your practice? Give everyone a few moments for that. Thank you. 
So it looks as though implant uh, placement is the predominant answer with 84% of the respondents selecting that one. Next up would be a three unit bridge. And 92% uh, of you believe uh, this type of a procedure would allow you to see more patients. So thank you so much for your responses. As we had mentioned earlier, the presentation is being recorded and that recording will be made available uh, within the next five to seven days. I'll come back on as well, hi. Uh, five to seven days, you will also be receiving your uh, CE credits within the next 48 hours. And if you have any questions, that can be sent to education at dentalservices.net specific to your continuing education credits. If you have any questions for DSG, that can be sent to me at kbevington at dentalservices.net. And we will also be following up with you with additional information on First Fit and some special offers as well. Thank you so much, Kelly, for having us on. We're excited. Oh, thanks, Carol. Thanks, Ken. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, and, and especially during this time, you know, everyone stay well. Uh, yeah. you know, uh, we will come out the other side of this, and there will be built and up a uh, need for dental services. will be different. We believe it will be, but at the end of the day, um, you, know, I, you know, everyone stay well. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you for being here. Thank you for staying connected with us, and uh, we look forward to seeing you all in the future. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Bye-bye.